Hello and welcome back to another episode of Hawaiian Share Projects. Today we're going to be working in the forge again, doing a little bit of blacksmithing. We will be making some simple wall hooks with the twist. If you don't like the twist, it's real simple. You just cut out the twist step and you still end up with a very beautiful hook. To start things off, we're going to be needing a piece of, I have four and a half inch long, quarter inch round stock. We're going to take and heat that up in the forge and then the first little inch, inch and a half section will turn into a bit of a square sharpen everything up. The way I'm doing this is I am getting the inch and a half piece that I'm wanting to forge nice and hot and then I'm going to take the flat side of my hammer and just do general taps on uh, each side making sure that I do a couple taps rotate the piece a quarter of a turn do a couple taps rotate again do a couple taps until I get the square that I want. For the next step, we are going to take that square section and we're going to start to bring that down into a taper. We're going to make it into a point, round it off, and then curl it later on. But in order to taper it, I'm just taking, again, my flat face, my hammer, bring it over to the edge of the anvil, put it at a slight angle, and then give it a couple smacks on one side, do a quarter turn, give it a couple smacks again. This will start to taper it out into a point. If you keep an eye on the tongs, you can see what I'm talking about when, it, when I'm saying rotate the piece quarter of a turn my tongs will be facing up and down and then when I'm ready to change over to hit another surface I'll give it a quarter turn you'll see that my tongs are now horizontal so for now we're just going to keep working the tip trying to draw it out into a good looking point and then we will end up knocking off the corners and rounding it out Now you may have noticed that I keep brushing it off with a wire brush. Uh, what I do is every time the metal is hot, I go ahead and hit it with this metal brush. And what that does is it helps keep back some of the scale buildup as well as makes a better looking finished product where I don't have to do as much sanding or filing to it later on. In order to get this point to turn into a round instead of a square, here's where we're going to knock the corners off. So on the square, I'm going to face it up on top of one of the corners, take my flat face of my hammer again, and just knock that corner down all the way the, the, the entire length of that point. This is going to turn into an octagon. And say so when you got it as an octagon, it's going to be much easier for when you actually start rotating it and turning it into a round again. Now that we have our octagon established, now we're gonna start uh, rounding it out. So I'm just going to take my hammer, once again, flat side. I'm just gonna start gently tapping as I continuously rotate with my tongue hand in a circle. That will knock down all them corners, all them edges, and we're gonna do this nice and gently. Make sure to keep it a constant motion until it becomes round. Now that we have that one inch section of the point rounded off, this is where we're going to put the scroll in it or the curly cue, whichever you want to call it. I just got the tip of it hot, use my scrolling tongs to pull it on over, rounding it around. Then you will have to continuously heat this because it's such thin metal, it will cool very quickly, but also remember it will heat very quickly as well. So be careful and don't burn the metal. You don't want to melt it all your place and have to start over again. Now, unfortunately, with my scrolling tongs, I didn't build them quite right, so I need to make a new pair. So I'm going to have to finish off doing my little scroll or cur curly cue on the end with a hammer. 
I'm just going to gently tap and roll that piece back over until it touches on the main body of the metal. Now once we got this first one finished, this here would be a good point for you to go ahead and take however many number of hooks that you're going to need doing, do the same process up to this point for that many that you need. And say that way they're all even and consistent and looking about the same before you move on to the next step. Now that you got all those even out and taken care of, looking like each other, uh, good time to move on to the next step. So I'm going to take my hardy hole as a piece of my measurement, because I know from the edge of the anvil to the edge of my hardy hole is one inch, and then my hardy hole itself is one inch. And so I want two inches of material from the edge of the curly cue down the shaft before I start to flatten it out, make it square again for the remainder of the material. This is where I'm going to put my twist in, as well as be flattening out to put the hole for the actual nail to be driven into the wall. So, once again, I just went ahead and used my hardy hole as a measurement. Just kind of placed my hammer where it needed to be, and then started to use my flatting side of the hammer, and made it in the shaft into a square. Well, while I got a minute to spare, and you guys are watching my beautiful video, Figured I'd toss in a little bit of a pop quiz for y'all. And so I'm going to ask a question and the, put your comments down below as to what your answer is. And at the end of the video, I'll let you know what the answer is. But the question today is, who is the god of blacksmithing in Greek mythology? Now that that's all squared off, it's time to twist it. I just heated again that back section, that two and a half or so inches of that I squared off. Put the curie cue down inside the vise, and then went ahead and grabbed a hold of it with a set of channel locks. If you got a uh, different pair of pliers, might work. Building a tool would be beneficial. I just don't haven't got around to it yet. But then I'm just going to grab hold of the top, try to twist it as even as possible. I believe I did two and a half turns on these hooks until I liked the way that the twist ended up looking. Straightened it out slightly as much as I could there at the anvil, and then we moved on to the next part. Now that the twist is taken care of, it's time to move on to flattening out the section that we're going to be drilling the hole in. To do that, I'm going to get my measurement again with side of the anvil to the hardy hole, one inch. I'm just going to do a half on, half off blow, which means half my hammer is on the anvil, half the hammer is off the edge of the anvil. That will create a nice, sharp little edge on the project itself for me to be able to work and flatten out the remainder of bit of metal. You see that little one inch section. We're going to flatten it out, kind of tip it over on side occasionally and make sure those are nice and even, keeping everything looking good. And I'm going to leave maybe an eighth inch of material, figure that'll be plenty to keep it sturdy and for me to be able to drill a hole into it. Now in doing this I did happen to bend the twisted section a little bit so I'm just going to take my wooden mallet and kind of straighten it back out with that using the wood mount will keep me from damaging that twist design in there and flattening it out or putting any marks into it, it keeps it looking good. Now I'm going to take my little bending jig that I made for my an the hardy hole of my anvil. I'm going to cool off the tip of that curly cue, put it into my bending jig, wrap it around into my hook shape. And I'm just going to take my hammer and just kind of tap along the outside and make sure everything's butted up nice and tight against that piece of round stock that I've got welded for my jig. That way I can consistently make a similar uh, shape and size hook every single time. Then I'm just going to take a hook that I've already finished and looks pretty good to me. I'm just going to do a little bit of tweaking to match everything up on the two. That way they're all uniform and looking good. Then once I'm satisfied with the way both the, uh, the new hook is looking compared to the original hook, I'm going to take my wire brush and just clean it off all the scale, uh, give it a good scrape and make it look nice and pretty. Now I'd like to say to those of you that made this far in the video, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. If you're enjoying the video, go ahead and hit that like button down there at the bottom. If you don't like it, let me know in the comments. If you have any suggestions or tips of, the, of your own for this project, go ahead and leave the comment down there in the comment section. I'd also like to say to those of you that are new to the channel, 
If you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe and that notification bell down there. That way you can get a heads up every time I release a new video. I'd really appreciate it. And the answer to the question is the Greek god of blacksmithing was called Hephaestus. At this point, there isn't really a whole lot left other than cleaning it all up, drilling the hole, and then sealing it with some beeswax. In order to clean it up a little bit better, I'm going to toss in the vise using a piece of leather to make sure I'm not marring up any of it and putting ugly scratch marks. I'm going to take my file, kind of file down the sharp edges, make it a nice, good looking, uh, rounded in there. And then I'm going to take a small little sheet metal screw because I can't seem to find my drills for my drill press. And I'm just going to drill a hole into it. That way when uh, the customer or whoever has it uh, wants to put it up on the wall, they can just drive a nail through. And there you have it, a finished product. Really want to say thank you guys all again. And as always, stay classy and party on.